Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for R. This screencast covers section 8.3 Chi-squared goodness of fit test for one sample. The Chi-squared goodness of fit test works on count data and asks if the distribution of counts between three or more categories is what you would have expected. It is obvious therefore that we have to inform the program as to what we would expect for the number of cases we would find in each category. We do this by telling the program the proportion of the sample we would expect to fall in each category expressed as a fraction. For example, in column 2 of this table, we see the breakdown of the number of households in Worcester City in terms of the number of dependent children within them. City councils often need such data to plan expenditure for the future, and one of the questions that can be asked is if Worcester is typical of England and Wales in general. While the figures from England and Wales are given in column 3, and in column 4 we can express this number as a fraction that gives the proportion of the cases in each group. In column 5 we express this fraction as a decimal. These are our expected proportions. We can now use the proportions given in column 5 to allow the program to calculate expected values so we can test the hypothesis that there is no difference between the distribution of dependent children in households in Worcester compared to the expected distribution found in England and Wales. This is the script we're going to be using. You may wish to freeze the screencast to look at it in more detail, or alternatively, you can download it from the resource centre. The command functions are in black, are all in lowercase, and you must enter them exactly as shown. The lines in green are notes to help your understanding of how the script flows. The words in blue are variable names and can be changed to suit your data, but you must be consistent in spelling and the use of lower and uppercase letters and the data are in red. There are several ways to load data into R. See my screencast Introduction to R for more details. Looking at the first variable, you can see that we have used the C operator to load the data into R. So let's run the script. First, I click at the beginning of the first line of the script. I'm going to run the script one line at a time. To do this in Windows or Linux, you need to press Control R. If you're using a Mac, you need to press Command Option R. We can see each line appears in the R console window. First we're going to define the variables using the C operator. In the case of the Worcester variable, I'm also going to give each column a name for clarity. We define the Worcester variable. We're defining the names for the Worcester variable. I'm now going to display the Worcester variable so you can see what the names do. You've got all four figures with the names of the categories above it. We're now going to define the proportions so R can calculate the expected values. I'm putting this in a variable called England Wales. You must note that the proportion values must be in the same order as the category data they relate to. Let's do the test. As we can see, the test is chi squared dot test, Worcester, comma. You then have an attribute P equals England Wales. That's instructing R to use the proportion values in the England Wales variable. We can see from the R console that we have a P value of 2.866 times 10 to the minus 5. So what is the meaning of the p-value? A p-value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p-value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p-value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. Such a small value as 2.866 times 10 to the minus 5 suggests that we can reject the null hypothesis, that there is a significant difference between the number of dependent children in households in the city of Worcester compared to the average number in England and Wales. What if you do not know what the expected values or proportions are? Then the default position is to expect the same number of cases in each category. This data taken from table 8.1 shows the number of counts of holly leaf miners at three adjacent height zones on holly trees. There is no prior expectation of what we should find, so in this case we assume that we should find equal numbers in each zone. That is, since we have three categories, we would expect a third of the insects to be found in each zone. This is the script for the second test, where we will not provide any expected proportions to R. Instead, R will assume that each category contains the same number of insects. So let's do the test. I'm going to run this script line by line as we did before. And you will see in the second half of the script, it is very similar to the previous one, where we define variables using the C operator, we name the column data, and we run the chi-squared test. 
The only difference is the chi square dot test does not contain the p operand because we don't need it. But this time I'm going to cheat a little bit. And as you reach the third line, you will see I've simply put the chi square dot test and added the data directly in line. This has given me a p value of less than 2.2 times 10 to the 60, an extremely low probability. We can conclude there is a highly significant difference between the number of holly leaf miners found in various height zones on the tree. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.